welcome to Ring Talk Series 3, episode somewhere between 4 and 6, 7, it's four, 8. It's four, it's four. There we go. Steve on the road this week doing his financial work. Yeah, How are you, Steve? I'm good. Just been at Hastings on the way back. So a stop off to do this with you, and then we're two hour drive to get home. And do you know what? Do you want know time I started work this morning as well? You're never no. going to guess. 10 past Sorry. three. 10 oh, past three. Man. Honest to God, I haven't been asleep since 10 past three. It's that we never stop ethos. You're taking it too seriously. Yeah, no, I need. I don't want to be doing this too often. That's for sure. I've no, it's only with... it's only a slogan, Steve. You don't have to stick to it. No, and I've got a meeting with Nissa Sowland tomorrow about various stuff. So, I've got to get back home, get some sleep, do a few bits in the morning, then heading off to London for a meeting with Nissa. Oh, you're not going to get back until eleven o'clock, probably anyway. Correct. We'll keep this short for, for for people wondering why this might be a shorter episode. Steve's well-being is the answer. <laughs> Yeah, let's crack on. Did you see the new see the new stoppage? Do you know I didn't watch? I was down in London myself today for a couple of meetings, um, and I was in between meetings and kind of watching it on my phone. Um, and thankfully, it didn't last too long because my phone battery was dying. Amazing um, fire, isn't it? He's amazing, anyway. Yeah, yeah, and I know he's what is he like eight stone, eight and a half stone, something yeah. like that. I kind of think, yeah, I know he's really hard, but I'd be really gutted if he beat me up. Like, if I was in a street fight with him, and he's just, he's a hard child, isn't he? Like, I'd be gutted if he really battered me. I've got to say, I wouldn't fancy fighting him. No, I, I mean, I'm thinking <laughs> that. I'm thinking that in my head, and I'm saying it out loud, but as I'm saying the words, I'm thinking, actually, like... <sighs> nah. never, you never see... Normally, you watch these lighter weights, and you know it's pitter patter. there's not a lot going on. He takes the lighter weights into another stratosphere. He is just vicious, isn't he? Yeah. He doesn't look it. <laughs> um, I see Joe but, Gallagher's chasing the fight for Paul Butler. I don't think that... I don't think that's... I don't think that's a, a very uh, equal fight, yeah. to say the least. Does, does, he, does he not like Paul Butler very much? I'd be worried for... Um... I mean, I, I realise that that's the one belt that Inoue doesn't have, and that makes him undisputed, and it's a great opportunity for Butler. But come on, like, we know. Yeah. We know. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, what, did you, what did you think of the Cordina fight last week? Brilliant. I mean, I say brilliant, I will always caveat that with, and I was texting our good friend Dave Evans beforehand, because he was, you know, he's a Welshman, he was very uh, invested in it. I said, I don't know anything about this Agawa. Nothing whatsoever. And before the fight, I did say this to Dave, it felt a little bit like it's one of these jobs of get a champion over, nobody really knows anything about them, and they get demolished. A little bit like Kanju. They come over with a bit of a reputation. Lee Wood takes him apart. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that takes nothing away from Joe Cordina. He was, that punch was Awful, awful. Yeah. Um, and, what, and what about the card this weekend? Uh, what's this weekend? You got React Your Porter. One. React, no, we've got our card, but oh. the Metro card. You got React Porter Archie, and you've got Zach Shelley against Jermaine Brown, which I, I love that fight. I like Zach Shelley against Jermaine Brown. I think that's fun. Um, Jermaine Brown's been on that that ride, hasn't he? That he. It's kind of going under the radar, but he's been on form now for about 18 months, two years. Um, good fighter, I think. But I've got a soft spot for Zach Shelley. Um, I, think, I, he, think Zach, I think Zach Shelley wins. He's do you? I think he's seasoned. I think he's been there. He's had the reversals. And I actually fancy Zach Shelley to win. I think for the same reason Jermaine will win, but it's a great fight. Um I'm not saying it with any total conviction, but I'd I'd fancy Jack, I'd fancy Zach. But yeah, I mean, I just think it's a great fight. The rest of the cards not brilliant, but the, that fight is great. Yeah, React Poor Turch, it's all right, but it, it kind of feels like React Poor just needs to fight Chris Billum Smith. Yeah, like let's get that out of the way again, and um, because well, Turchy, those two are... Turchy was beaten by McCarthy. And I think yeah. that tells you where Turchy is, and that was on home soil. So let's be realistic. React Paul's got those dynamite fists. I think React Paul, you know, React Paul just fight, will find a way, will find a way to win it. 
No, I agree. I, I'm not even sure who else on the card, to be honest. I've, um, I'm not I paid. Dalton Smith, but, but you know, the, it's not a great, it's not a great, it's not one of the greatest cards. It's not one of no. the greatest No, no. All that Chisora's fight with Pulev. Um, your old charge, Derek Chisora. Listen, keep reinventing somebody who keep, you know, Derek Chisora is just keeps getting, no matter what happens, how many losses he has, they reinvent him as top of the bill. You can't blame him for taking the money. I can't blame him at all. What planet are we on where in 2022, Chisora on the back of three losses in a row, is it now? Please. Parker, Usyk, White, maybe? I, I'm sure it's three losses in a row. When did he last win a fight? I, I couldn't tell you who he last beat. Um, I think it might be... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, couldn't tell you who he last beat. And we've already seen the Pulev fight, and it wasn't very good. And yet that is now headlining at the O2. I and both that, fighters are worse than they were when they fought the first fight. Yeah, there, there's, no, there's nothing in that fight for me. I don't, I don't understand it particularly. That's going to need some undercard to sell. Um, but as you say, I don't blame Derek for that. Good luck to Derek. Um, but that's not game changed. Um, well, it is on a negative basis. Ooh, well, yeah, it's gone backwards. <laughs> yeah, they've turned the clock back again on Derek's career. So, mm. I know, good luck to him, but it's not for me. Yeah. Um, and you've got a show this weekend. Yeah, You're it's back. Falling You're bidding it's up fall- June. It's fallen apart a bit. Um, as I say, we're heading towards our main event, which is the 23rd of July. That we've got more to come, but there's some unbelievable fights in the pipeline to add to that. Um, but yeah, this one's fallen apart. Unfortunately, Chris Davis, 10 days out, has done the same thing again, pulled out with 10 days to go against William Weber for the Southern Area title, um, and then doesn't want to reschedule. So, um, again, uh, yeah, so let's just leave that as it is. I think it's all 10 days before twice. Um, He's very disappointing, to say the least. Um, But moving on, we're working on another fight for William Webber for the Southern Area title, which hopefully we can get nailed down in the next two to three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But no, it is disappointing for him. And and it's disappointing for William. I know William's been looking forward to that fight for a long time. Um, Twice he's trained for it. Twice, ten days before the pullout happens. Yeah. And this weekend is your um, the one where you've got your amateur crossover into the yeah. pro. Uh, so the, am- well. ama- the amateur show starts at 11, finishes at 3.30. So people can come for both if they want. Um, and then at we then open the doors at 5. Our show starts at 6. It will be finished by 9, so it'll be an early finish. Um, so, yeah, people can get to both shows if they want. Go over the amateur, go home. We'll go to the professionals if they want. Um, but we'll run through the we'll run through the card. There's some um, really good prospects on here, so we'll we'll kick off and we'll start off with two six rounders. The first one is Mikey Sankyu makes his Goodwin debut, takes on Lee Hallett. Now Mikey Sankyu, former Southern Area champion, yeah, he was out of contract. He came to us, signed with us, and it's his first fight under our banner. And obviously, we're looking to build Mikey up to. English level and beyond. We think he's got the um, talent to do that. Um, obviously, formerly, I think he's formerly MTK from memory. He was. It's MTK. So um, we had that question the other week. So um, so Mikey's with us. And, um, you know, he's got a Lee Hallett, who's a tough, with, despite he's one of these guys whose record doesn't signify how dangerous he can be. He gave ID Hill murders in his last fight um, on our shows. But we're looking to Mikey Saki to make a statement. Uh, Jack Owen makes his, he's undefeated in six. He makes his first step up to six rounds. Um, so we're looking forward to see Jack as he's he's probably just two or three fights away from some sort of title. Um, yeah, that, that Saki, going back to Saki quickly, his was the fight of Sia Osgul, wasn't it? It yes. was an absolute storming fight. It was a, yeah. was it a tenth round stoppage that Saki got over Sia Osgul? It was. 
that was a ridiculous fight. If anyone has the time before Saturday to see what you're going to go and watch, go and find that on YouTube somewhere. It was outstanding. I'm just going to no turn my camera off and on again. It's that good that my camera's gone out of focus. Um, but yeah, he was. Uh, that was a highlight. That fight of uh, of any yeah. fighter's career, I think. No, Mike. Mike, he's good to watch. I mean, he had the he had the the fight with ID Hill where he not he mm. won that with an early stoppage. So he's very exciting. So I'm looking forward to seeing him um, as he we rebuild his career for him. Um, elsewhere, we're seeing um, a couple of the, the Andy Gill charges. Lewis Frimpong, who um, will now take on Jamie Quinn uh, over over four rounds. Now, Lewis is probably looking towards Southern area towards the end of the year, looking to step up after this fight all going well to six rounds and then aim towards the Southern area. Um, so that's good. And uh, Andy's son, Pat, has his uh, third contest taking on uh, Curtis Gagano's John Spencer. So Pat, who um, hasn't got as much amateur experience as Lewis, will take a bit more time, but he's very, uh, very exciting to watch. So exciting to see him. Um, Speaking of playing the sons that have turned over, Ellis Stewart, by the way. Yeah, turned over. So you mentioned to him. Yeah, and we're looking forward to managing him. We look after Ladd and Brynus. Uh, Ladd and, sorry, Brad and Linus. Long day. Long day. <laughs> Linus and Brad. Um, so looking forward to helping Ellis build his career as well. And he's Yeah, probably... Terry Stewart's son. He's oh. been around the camp for a long time, hasn't he? Like When I went down and trained with him for that while, he was, you know, he was down there training with him then. Sparring well, with he has had a lot of amateur experience, but I think he's going to become a very, very, very good professional fighter. Mm -hmm. And he's a really nice lad as well. So I'm really looking forward to helping him. Yeah, well, I say he's been um, he's been out there sparring with Brad and Linus for the last five or so years, isn't he? So he's got yep. it all under his belt. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. And a really exciting fighter, Timon Duglin, who uh, on his debut fought Harry Matthews. My God, does he bring some support and some noise? Um, he's he sold really well, and uh, he's fighting Robbie, and Robbie's a test for anybody. But he's he's a really talented kid, so I'm looking forward to that. Really looking forward to that fight. <laughs> I see Robbie out there the other week saying that he'll take on anyone up to light heavyweight, wasn't it, in the country? Under he's, moved, he's doing light heavyweight now. Well, there's no, there's a lack of journeymen in super middle to light heavy. So with Robbie going up in weight to face certain fighters, he can be fighting most weeks now. So you know, he's got a challenge for somebody to stop him. He said, I won't get stopped. So it's a challenge for every up and coming fighter to try and stop the Camden caretaker. I love Robbie. I love Robbie. I yeah. think he's brilliant. So that's going to be exciting to watch. Big crowd and Robbie will obviously be playing up to it. And we've got a couple of debutants, Casey Bradnam, who's um, I've been looking forward to seeing for a long time. He takes on Dean Wilkinson. He's a welterweight, Casey, but good, talented amateur. Really looking forward to seeing him. And Sher Khan, who's had a couple of full starts, he makes his debut at lightweight. So really looking forward to seeing both of those, Casey and Sher, on their debuts. So really, it, it is a show where you've got Mikey, the experienced man, en route to titles. Lewis, who's Lewis Frimpong and uh, Jack Owen, who are six months or so away from potential titles. You've got... Um, Others developing, and you've got the two debutants. So it's a nice little fun show um, that will kick yeah. off at six o'clock. Yeah, and do get down there for the amateur show before, and um, and again to be clear, I think you've um, been clear about this already enough. But there are two different uh, under two different auspices: one under Boxing England, one under the British Boxing Board of Control. Um, so people will have to leave the venue, come back to the venue. For the two different shows. I mean, it's, it's nice to help support the amateurs because by us taking charge of the venue costs, they don't they can put a show on and not have to have a venue cost. And and those yeah. young fighters get to fight at your call. So, you know, we're not making any profit out of doing it. We're just trying to facilitate and give youngsters the chance of boxing. It's something we're going to look to do going forward as well. We're looking to do it again in September time. Yeah, it's brilliant. It might create a pathway for them through to the pros in due course. Yeah, exactly. As they, as they get there. Cool. Um, we'll come on to next week's show next week. Um, so yeah. as to save your time now, because then we can allow you to go home and not fall asleep in the car or fall asleep with uh, Nissa Sauerland. So prior to that, 
Uh, we've got one question, and it's a blinding question. Um, from Ross Newton on Twitter. Um, Hi, Steve. Per uh, the shared status below from Anthony Kakache, is there any help or advice that you could give? So, Anto Kakache, and Kakache is an established fighter, isn't he? He's fought um, the British title, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's, he's been around for ages. I remember seeing him on the Eubank versus Abraham undercard at mm-hmm. um, Wembley Arena. It, this was his status that he put out. Um, there should 100% be more of a support network in place for pro boxers. I can't get free from a manager's contract that ended months ago. My ex-manager wants a cut of my purse of my next three fights that haven't even been confirmed or happened yet. I don't understand why or how that could even make sense. Two years left for me to try and get somewhere and can't seem to be able to catch a break. Then there's a little bit more. But right. Is there any advice that can be given to somebody in that position? Well, that information, that information can't be right. So if you were to break it down into the component parts, he's got a contract that he says has expired. So if it is, if all he's assigned is a management contract, a that board, has expired, a board management, management contract. contract, if that's all he's got, then he can walk. But what a lot of these fighters do or are asked to do by different people is not only to sign a manager's contract, but to sign a personal services agreement alongside that manager's contract. Which is why I stress the board manager's contract. Now, if you sign a personal services agreement, what normally can happen in boxing, let's say, for example, I get a boxer to sign a personal services agreement in addition to the manager contract, and I don't do it, by the way, I wouldn't do these, you can then put a clause in to say that should I not be promoting anymore or not managing anymore, I can give that manager contract to anybody I want, and the box has to follow the terms of that contract until the end of the period. I can only assume that the fighter has signed a personal services agreement, which is not regulated by the board and is only contested in a court of law. Now, if he has signed a personal services agreement, he's fucked. <laughs> yeah, but a warning to all boxers out there, or warning to all boxers out there, is to get the right people behind you, get the right legal team behind you if you're at that level, and be careful what you sign. I have no idea. Who he signed with, I really don't. I don't know who, whatever. But the only thing that can be stopping him from leaving a contract is he has signed a personal services agreement. So his management contract may have finished, but I have seen these personal services agreements from various people over in the country, various of up to seven years. And they stop people sign that without reading them. And yeah, and so therefore, if he signed that, then he's no way out without paying. He will have to pay the money. He has no choice because he would have to go to a court to try and get that contract squashed. So he'd have to spend all the legal fees doing it. That's the issue. Now, if you then, what would then happen in that scenario? You could, if he signed a personal services agreement, but the management contract is finished and he's regulated by a board, he can go and get a new manager and then the manager would arrange his fights then if he doesn't pay the fees under the personal services agreement, the person who's got the personal services agreement on him can then sue him. And then it becomes a battle in court. We've been saying this for years on here, that boxers don't always help themselves. And I'm not saying that's the case for Anthony Kikache, because without seeing the paperwork, you don't know what he's talking about. Exactly. Um, And so... If it is a case that all he's ever signed is a board contract, although he might be under a, a BUI one, actually, to be honest, the uh, no, I think about yeah. it, but whatever that looks whatever like, I don't know. But if it's expired, yeah. if it's expired, it's expired. So obviously that may have expired, but the way I'm reading this, he's got something else, which is a yeah, personal services a, contract. 
Yeah, if you sign something that isn't regulated by the board, you're taking it into your own hands, and at that point, it's a little bit daft, um, unless you've done the due diligence on it to say this is a... But why, why are you signing something that isn't board regularly? <laughs> but the thing is, though, I'll give you an example, though. When we do a promotional contract, promotional for, say, Linus with Wassermans, we do sign a separate agreement for a promotional contract. But you wouldn't really be very wise signing a separate agreement for a manager or advisor. But it sounds like he's employed a manager as an advisor as well as a manager. I don't know what he's doing, but I can only assume he's, but he signed some personal service agreement. Unfortunately, as you say, sometimes boxers can't help themselves. It's okay asking for advice now. You should get advice before you sign pieces of paper. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think people almost don't appreciate these are legally binding bits of paper. They're not just dick about bits of paper that people will kind of chuck away in time. But exactly, um, exactly. I, I hope it works out well for Anto because he's the one who goes in the ring and takes the punches and, you know, hopefully earns the money out of it. But well, hopefully, it hopefully great. boxers that read this may in the future be careful about what they sign. Yeah, we shall see. We shall see. Right, let's end it there, Steve, so you can get back on the road. Thanks very much. Good luck with the sounds tomorrow. I'll quiz you next week about what the uh, the outcomes were. Yeah. Um, people get down to the show Saturday. Morning is the amateurs. Afternoon, evening is the pros. Free up your time. Get down there and uh, two cracking shows. Cheers, Mike. We shall see you next week, Steve. Take care, my friend. Safe Take journey. Care. Bye bye. Yeah.